Am I up? Oh, there we go. Okay. Hey, is anybody playing old school? How has the last 12 months been for you guys? Have you had a good time? Are you looking forward to hearing what will be in store for you for the next 12 months? I can't have the old school team come out onto this stage until they hear a massive cheer. So I need you to break the speakers with your screams. Introducing the old school team. <laughs> How are we all doing? Nice Lovely to see so many of you here. Welcome to the old school reveals. We should, we should, Alec. Oh, we're, on. Oh, we're mic'd. Sorry. We've got right. an Hello. uneven split on the sofas, isn't it? Uh, oh, bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> well uh, rehearsed. <laughs> so, my name's Matt. I'm the product manager for Old School RuneScape. And let me introduce these guys. We've got, oh my God, it's Chris Archie. Woo no. woo! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have the Ginger Ninja, <laughs> Mini Boaty. Mod Ed. <laughs> the muscle, the bicep. Thanks. Mod Swoon, I mean Swoon. Uh, easy. Easy. <laughs> this man is the only man I know who can say the word book and make it sound like a chicken. Book, book, book. Mod Kieran. <laughs> Last, but by no means least, we have Mr. Motivator. Super energy, it's Mod Wolf. So the first thing we like to do at these sort of things is talk about what we spoke about last RuneFest. And I'll get to the right page in a minute, there we go. So last RuneFest, we spoke about raids, we did raids. We spoke about the Inferno, we did the Inferno. Wooks knows that very well. We spoke about Fossil Island, we did Fossil Island. And Dovi Das knows about that very well. <laughs> And we spoke about making friends with my arm, which we're planning to bring out next year. But we've done a whole load of other stuff as well. We've done things such as the Slayer Caves, we reworked those. We did Hardcore Iron Man, incredibly successful. Um, and probably one of the biggest things, something that everyone's used, is a world map. Remade that. And the last 12 months have been huge. There's been a massive growth in old school. Loads more players coming in from great new content, Iron Man for example, raids have brought in a huge amount of new players all underpinned by the competitive gaming we're doing. So Dead Man is still bringing in thousands upon thousands of new players. The PvP Championships did the same thing. And it's been absolutely amazing. It's been so great, we've had a record breaking year. We've got over 400,000 members that play the game. What's most amazing about that is that 200,000 of them log into game every single day, which is really overwhelming. They decide not to go to the cinema. They decide not to play other games. They decide not to learn an instrument or talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> they decide to play our game. And that, for all of us and the entire team, is really humbling that people want to spend their free time playing the game that we make. And again, the streams we've done as well, we've managed to clock up over 100,000 people watching Old School at one point on Twitch. And that is absolutely astounding. So, where does all the success come from? It doesn't come just from us, it comes from you guys as well. The community, whether you're sat in the audience here, or at home, together, we and us make RuneScape strong. And together, we can make RuneScape even greater. And show you how we're gonna do that this year. Kieran, I'm Mod Archie. You all right, guys? So, before we get things kicked off with a big, a big reveal, we're gonna bring you back to January 2017, when we released The Chambers of Zeric, our first ever raiding dungeon. And still to this day, this is one of the most popular pieces of PVM content I think we've ever done in RuneScape. And to come down to some numbers, over 10,000 of Chambers of Zeric are completed every single day. And that number's not really dropped since launch. And it's just mind-blowing the commitment that the different PVM clans and communities have just stuck at it, and it's something they want to see more of. But before we carry on, I just want to mention that we still know there's room for expansion with the Chambers of Zeric. I'd love to add some more rooms there, some more puzzles and challenges. So here we can see the old school RuneScape map. And you might notice there's a, there's a few black areas that could be filled. Um, well, we've decided to fill one. As we slowly but surely do approach uh, Mayor Ditch, 
We will find the land of the vampires. Vampires are pretty badass, right? They can be intimidating. They can be extremely strong. And they will be as we introduce them in the theater of blood as our second ever raids. Come on! <laughs> So, you might have heard the word Maya Ditch and been a little scared about the, your last escapade through that place. But what you'll see on this map here is there's a lovely little dock conveniently located near the Theatre of Blood that you'll be able to take that boat from Burderot further around to the east coast, east of Maya Ditch, and into the castle that's been sat there unopened all this time. Now, the Theatre of Blood is where all these vampires go for entertainment. They push these human slaves through the gauntlet of a series of challenges, and eventually they suffer and fail. No one's actually made it through yet, probably because it doesn't exist yet, but <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> that dock wasn't always there, was it? Was the dock? No, yeah. the dock's new. Oh, wow. Uh, there's a map that Mod West has put together, and I think it's looking awesome. It'll give yeah. you a, a little preview of what it might look like. Essentially, we knew we wanted to do raids too. Um, we had some really incredible ideas, but we weren't really sure where to put it. We yeah. looked around the map and we saw Mayor Ditch, which looks incredible. It really does. But there's not too much there. Um, so we decided, you know what, this is the perfect place. Yeah. We have these vampires who have been sitting in this hall, uh, a completely linear hall, which we'll get into in a second. And, and they almost challenge you um, as they sit in the stands and watch you run through their challenges, the monsters that they feel like throwing at you, the puzzles, whatever they can think of, they'll throw it all at you. And if you can entertain them, they'll give you a reward. So. What makes the Theatre of Blood unique compared to the Chambers of Zarek? We don't want to just offer you the same thing twice. And the first point to note is that we're going to aim for smaller teams with this content and aim it to be around three to five players and really focus on that small group of players. Up next is uh, teamwork. So teamwork is absolutely essential with Raids 2 in the Theatre of Blood. You will not be able to leech through the Theatre of Blood. You're going to have to pave your way. You're going to have to actually put in the work. Everybody on your team is going to have to do a specific role uh, when it comes to a certain room or what have you. You're not going to be able to just sit in the background and uh, take a break. And that links in nicely with the fact we're aiming at three to five. We can really look concretely at what each individual player is going to be doing in a specific, in a specific challenge. So food drops and no skilling in this, in this content. You will go in there with a bunch of supplies, and you have to make it to the end with that supplies and any drops you get from the challenges you take on within. Right, so if you're, if you're faced with a, a very difficult boss, he might consume some of, your, of some of your supplies, sorry. And as I mentioned, and we will get through uh, very shortly, this is a linear raid, which means that you don't have the opportunity um, to, to run back to another room where you might have left some food or, or sorry, run to the bank or whatever. Uh, you bring in what you have, hopefully it lasts the entire time. And if you kill a boss who happens to drop some meat, then fantastic, you got some food. Or maybe you entertain the vampires, maybe they'll throw you some food. And speaking of being linear, so this is not going to be randomized. You won't get into a raid and then think, oh, I have no idea what I'm going up against next, what's in the next room. You will know, without a doubt, um, the exact uh, level of all of these rooms leading up to the final boss at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's all just to put that real emphasis on something that you can learn and master and produce faster and faster raid times throughout the Fate of Blood. And of course, the raid will end with a challenging final boss in a similar vein to the giant, um, to the to the great arm in the Chambers of Zarek. We want to end with a bang, something that's insanely challenging for the PVMers going in there. And lastly is the death system. This is perhaps the biggest change here uh, to, as a comparison compared to the Chambers of Zarek. The death system in the Theater of Blood will be a, I'm trying to think of the terminology for it, it's, um, it's a wiping mechanic, which means that if you run into a room with five teammates, and one of you dies, that person cannot just respawn and run back into the room to help his teammate. He has to sit and watch at the beginning of the room and hope that his remaining four teammates can do the job. If they cannot do the job, they need to die and wipe, which restarts the room, wastes any supplies and times that you've put into the room, and there you go. So, we want to give you a, a little example of one of the challenges we've been thinking about, just to give you a little bit of insight into what's going on inside our heads. 
Yeah. Um, so this is the first room. Essentially what we had here is uh, we've got plenty of rooms um, that will all lead up to the final boss. Now they're all, believe me, really exciting, challenging, difficult bosses or puzzles or what have you. Um, we don't want to ex expose all of them because you're going to learn the mechanics and the secrets. Wooks is here. He's going to learn all of this before we even put the thing live. Um, but we'll give you a couple of rooms, all right? This is the first room. This is the key master. As you approach this room with your team, there's a massive boss. He's got a massive key he's carrying. Eventually, your team will be able to take him down, hopefully. If you kill him, you're going to have to carry this key. It's a heavy key. You have to carry it to the end to unlock the next door. However, because the key is so heavy, you have to carry it with both hands. No weapon, no shield, and you can't run. You're walking very slowly, and you're very vulnerable to all of the monsters that are coming out of the corridor, as you can see on the side. All of these swarms of monsters will be targeting the key carrier. He's going to have to do an incredible job tanking. That's what the remaining teammates have to do. You have four or however many other teammates you have that have to do the defending. They have to have the barrages, the chins, what have you. They need to keep the key carrier alive. And eventually the key carrier is going to get exhausted. He's going to have to drop the key and replace somebody else's role as the killer. A killer is going to have to swap out, carry the key, and hopefully finish the job. I really showcases that emphasis on assigning roles. Like you'll assign someone to take on the creature from this corridor here, and you'll assign someone obviously to carry the key, and it just, I love that, and the planning that's gonna have to go into it as a team. So, with no great raiding dungeon, can go without great rewards. And the first thing I wanna mention is that obviously power creep is a concern in the community. It's a concern for us as well, and we wanna get it absolutely spot on. And just like the Chambers of Zarek, we want to really focus on working with the community to get this right. As you've seen with the Chambers of Zarek, we went back and forth with a load of different ideas until we eventually ended up what we, what we did with the Twisted Bow and uh, Dragon Claws, etc. And so we want your ideas. Send them across, we're listening, and we'll go back and forth as much as we need to make sure we get the right rewards for this content. Right, yeah. so immediately after this presentation, our eyes are going to be glued to Reddit, social. Uh, our Q&As are a great opportunity to pitch suggestions for weapons or armors or uh, consumables, anything you can think of as a reward. Now, we do have a couple ideas. I'm going to go through one that I like in specific. Um, the armor reward. Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, should we save that a bit? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, you're right. Let's get to the basic loot obtained through each raid. That's, that's pretty special. That's, again, something that's quite different to the Chambers of Zarek. Um, with this, you're not just going to get a reward at the end when you beat the final boss. Because with that, you could have spent two, three, four, five hours and maybe never even made it to the boss or defeated the last boss, so it's a waste of time. With this, you're going to get something after every single room. It's not going to be anything amazing. It's going to pay for your time and supplies. Um, so we're not looking to absolutely smash any best in slot money makers, um, but you know, you might kill a boss in one room and get 100k for each player. Um, something to that standard, and then balancing that depending on how many rooms are remaining and then what you actually get for the final boss and how big that is, that also comes into factor. So getting it on those new armors. You're there we are, the armors, <laughs> all right. Beautiful artwork here from Mod West. So with the armors, what we want is something to really tell the, the world. As I mentioned earlier with Bounty Hunter, we want to be able to tell the world how amazing you are at, at specific pieces of content. Raids in specific, some of you guys specialize in this stuff. It's what you do all day, every day. With these armors, we're going to give you an extremely rare chance to receive these from the final boss. Now these are going to be great, but not amazing in the, in the actual game itself. Right? We're thinking maybe like Barrows. However, in the actual raid itself, they're going to be spectacular. As I mentioned with that previous room and carrying the key, these armors will have certain benefits. We could throw on the, the legs. We could give them a benefit in that room in specific that will help you carry the key a little bit farther. Increase your stamina. Maybe you can walk a bit quicker. Maybe you can carry it a bit farther, what have you. Um, that's what we're looking for here with these armors. They're going to have actual in-raid benefits and they're going to look like, you know, you only have these if you're good at the raids, essentially. Yeah. If you if find somebody with these armors, you want him on your team. It's something to really showcase what you've achieved, yeah. right? So another idea I've been considering are a new base for a set of potions, vials of blood. So obviously we have vials of water. They form most of the potions in the game. We've seen vials of coconut milk. But something we could offer here are vials of blood. And there's a few ideas we've been thinking about. Um, like the concept that you drink a potion, you take a bit of damage, but it's in exchange for a more powerful boost. Um, there's gaps with magic and range to have a combat potion variant of those, so they'll boost your defense and your magic level at the same time, that sort of thing. But again, this is very much open to your ideas and suggestions of what you want to see. 
Yeah, the Zamorak brew is uh, really iconic, actually. Yeah. It's, it's the only thing like it in the game. Um, and we really, we definitely could play around with that. So I guess next we throw things over to Mod Wolf. We missed one, but. <laughs> oh, did, we, did we miss a slide? <laughs> this, this thing double clicks. <laughs> do you want to explain the other room? Three new weapons. Right. We want to offer as well. So I'd love to offer a weapon for each of the three styles. And we're not sure exactly what yet, but. I really like the idea that you power them up with blood runes, panic buy, and they offer different special abilities when powered up, like passive effects as you use the weapons, just to give you, a little bit, give you something a little bit different to what's currently on offer right now. We're also missing, with magic especially, like a special attack that has yeah. KO potential, and I think that's a gap that it would be cool to fill. There's, there's just a couple ideas I can run you through quickly. So essentially, again, as I mentioned earlier when we were talking about creating a new skill, um, we can't invest a year's worth of time into making everything and then you guys saying, ah, we don't like that. So we're going to work with you from the very beginning and make something absolutely to your, um, to your preferences. Um, but an example of a magic spell, we, something we don't really have in the game, is a, a chained spell. So you damage an opponent in, and in front of you, an NPC, and it might chain to the guy next to him or the one next to him. Um, or another one where it's like a barrage that you can cast on yourself. So it's not just hitting the six squares or whatever it is in front of you, but also getting the guys behind you. Um, there's so many different, different elements we can throw into this, especially with magic. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys can think of. So just before we hand over to Mod Wolf, I just want to just showcase, like, we're excited about this content. We really want to make something new and better than we have ever offered before. Like, really give the PVM community something to really dip their teeth into and get everyone else to give something in PVM a go as well. I can't wait to see it, and I hope you guys are excited too. And with that, we'll pass it over to Mod Wolf. Woo! Go on, Wolfie. I'm not going to lie, it's a pretty tough act to follow, Theatre of Blood. Um, everybody loves PVM in this community. PVM is a pretty large part of our community. But there is another part of our game that many of us play and that we all love, and that's skilling. It's a core part of RuneScape. And we sat down as a team and decided, you know, for this year's update, or next year's big skilling update for that matter, there's a lot of skills that could do with a little bit of love, um, a lot that we get suggestions on from Reddit and from Twitter. And after a bit of discussion, we decided that the uh, skill that we want to look at and tackle is farming. So. Uh, Modash has already been hard at work on this. Modash has been working on the farming timer, making it more consistent. That's something that we really want to get out sometime this year. But on top of that, we also want to start expanding those underused patches. Most people do their tree runs, their fruit tree runs, and every now and then they'll plant some herbs, they'll get their herbs, and that's about it. And that's quite a shame, really. Like Farming is a skill that has so much to offer that we kind of neglected. So we want to expand some of those patches. We want to add snake grass to be grown in allotments. Modash came up with this great idea of growing in the hot patch, like bamboo that is battle staff. So I thought that was brilliant. Some great ideas for those underused patches. Uh, we also want to add variety to patches that you already use. So we want to add some new herbs, chaotic herb seeds that will give you a variety of seeds, uh, herbs for that matter, when you, far when you harvest. Uh, completely different, uh, but double the resource to kind of counteract that. Uh, evil trees, we want to make evil spirit trees inside of the wilderness so that you can teleport in there and consume those spirit tree seeds that you all have. And on top of that, we also want to add a new fruit tree, the dragon fruit tree. That's going to be the new highest level fruit tree, offering more experience than palms. And we think that secondary is probably going to be used uh, for those portions that we spoke of earlier. We also want to add livestock. We saw the require we saw so many people ask for livestock and gentle tractors post. It swayed at us, absolutely. So we want to start work on that. And you're probably wondering how it works. It's a little bit different than regular farming. So you have two barns around the world, one in Lumbridge, and one will be found somewhere else, which we can talk in just a little bit. And in those barns, you have two pens. There'll be a farmer that you can purchase your animals from, from resources or cash. And you can essentially take care of them, you know, just like in real life. Animals grow over time, and you can harvest them over time. So we're thinking of some higher level creatures there. We've gotten uh, the baby moles, the baby dragons, and ancient snakelings. Those are some of the higher levels that we thought of. And we'd be really interested in seeing what you guys think in terms of what we should add to this. But compared to regular farming, you don't just plant the seed, run off, come back, you harvest, and you're done. You can harvest these multiple times. Uh, baby moles can give you magic roots, and baby dragons shed their scales. You can also milk ancient snakelings for their anti-venom multiple times. Yes, I said milk. Um, but the problem with animals is that 
you know, they have a lifespan, you know? So near the end of it, you can also slaughter them for a different resource and a very large chunk of experience. So baby moles will of course give you their skin and their claws, dragon's bones and their dragon hide, as well as ancient snakeling Zolra scales uh, from the ancient snakelings. Some really cool ideas we think that is really gonna add to the variety of stuff that you can get from farming, something that we really think it's lacking. Now, on top of livestock and expanding those patches and adding variety to patches, we also want to do one more thing. Um, as many of you might have saw, Gentle Tractor's post also mentioned a farming guild, and we'd like to tackle that in Zaire as well. Um, the farming guild will be found to the west of the, uh, of the Shazian clan, and it's gonna be a little bit different than regular guilds. It's gonna have three tiers, uh, tier 60, 70, and 80, and there's gonna be a multitude of things in there. The guild itself is actually sentient, it lives. You can hack it weekly to keep it trimmed to be able to use it, and also to access the areas. And in those areas, you're probably wondering what's in there. I mean, the second pen that I mentioned, but there's a multitude of patches, new cactus patches, spirit tree patches, the redwood tree patch that we've never introduced before. We've gotten uh, an absolute multitude of stuff that you're gonna add to your farming run. Um, there's some interesting things on there that you might see. So we've got a new growable and fightable demibots, which will give you a nice chunk of experience, as well as several high-level seed drops and some un new uniques. So we're thinking of bottomless compost buckets so that you can take it with you on your farm run, you charge it with compost, et cetera. But there's also one more cool thing on there that I really wanna talk about, and that's the, uh, the Gaia patch. Now the Gaia patch is unique. It affects the entirety of the world. It affects all patches that it touches. Uh, we've got three ideas at the moment. Double clicked. We've got three ideas at the moment. Depending on which one you grow, all your patches will have some unique effects. So one that we were thinking of is, if you grow that center flower in there, all your patches will give you substantially more resources when farming. Uh, the one on the left, a substantially lower chance of disease, and the one on the right, it can potentially <coughs> skip stages of farming to speed your runs. The first stage of growth will be instantly skipped if that's grown. Some pretty cool ideas, we think, and we're certainly interested in hearing all of your ideas. Again, as with the previous uh, Theater of Blood, we're going to be check, uh, checking Reddit, checking Twitter. Please come up to us today and give us ideas. And with that in mind, I'm going to pass you on to Mod Sween and Mod Archie. Thank you very much. Sorry, guys, me again. Um, so for this next update, we'll have Mod Sween up shortly, but this next thing is, uh, if we can get to it here, the PvP rejuvenation. So as you guys might know, I'm a, I'm a bit passionate with PvP. Um, we've had some fun ideas. We've done Wilderness Wars. We just did the Dead Man Mansions. Um, we love all of it. We love all of the competitive gaming events and uh, what they bring to the game. But what we're going to get into right now is Bounty Hunter in specific. We're going to get into the actual game and uh, one of the updates in the game. With Bounty Hunter, we're going to be bringing in Slayer tasks for players. Player bounties will be essentially Slayer tasks for players. What's going to happen is the emblem trader has been given the ability to look at your account and see your stats. He can say, oh, I see you've got base 90 stats, you're a pretty high level. Go kill your next target with a full barrow set equipped. That's a task. If you're able to complete this, you can, you can come back to him and say, I did what you asked me, now give me something. Now eventually, after completing several of his tasks, you'll gain ranks. You'll start out at rank zero, of course, but eventually gaining these ranks will get you a mysterious loot crate. It's not going to be anything incredible. It's not going to be best money-making method in the game. Not even going to come close. But, you know, you might find some PKing supplies. You might find nothing. It's just going to add a little bit of value to your PKing experience and help out those newer players who are trying to get <coughs> into it. Um, the guys who go out there and die 30 times a day, they'll appreciate this one. And with the bounty hunters, or sorry, with the player bounties, we can look at all types of, of accounts. We can look at one defense accounts with 60 attack. We can say kill your next target with a DDS kill. Um, all sorts of things there. Um, so we just mentioned the reward system. And of course, what's beautiful about this is you get to set goals. You get to actually look at your account and, and decide on what you want to do in Bounty Hunter. You don't have to just go out there with whatever the meta is. You don't have to use what everybody else is using. And that's what's really nice about this, is it's going to add some variety to Bounty Hunter. You're going to run out there into Edgeville and you're going to see people using all different types of gears and weapons because they all want to complete their tasks. It's not going to be the same thing anymore. And there are incentives to stay. You know, if you see yourself at rank 
3.8 and you really want to get to rank 4, you might stay on for the extra hour or two. And then you'll find yourself coming close to rank 4 after handing in some more bounties, and you'll probably want to stay a bit longer. I'm just imagining now the streams of like road to rank 1,000 or road to rank 100. And with that will come rewards. Not just the mysterious loot crates, but also a new armor found in the bounty hunter shop. As I mentioned earlier with raids, what we want to do is put something into the game that will help tell the world how amazing you are at the content that you specialize in. One of my favorite things in the game is the yellow decorative armor from Castle Wars. Right? Very prestigious, very expensive, but it's only tier 30. It's only adamant equivalent. What we want to do is add something a little bit nicer into Bounty Hunter, probably just tier 40, potentially up to tier 70, depending on the community's uh, reaction to this, essentially. But what this is going to do is it's, it's going to cost a fortune. You have to be rank maybe 1,000. We'll decide on that when we get to the balancing, but it's going to take you a very long time, and eventually you'll be able to show off to the world that you are incredibly skilled when it comes to Bounty Hunter. We then move on to the Wilderness and a few expansions with Mod Sweeney. Yeah, so we've got a lot more to cover than Bounty Hunter, obviously a small section of the Wilderness. We've got a whole area we want to do a lot with. Uh, do you want to click me through? Sure, there you go. That's sweet, yeah, that's better. Uh, Major Arena 2, right, so the first Major Arena actually came out 10 years ago yesterday. So, big anniversary there. The God Cape has been best in slot for way too long. Yeah. So, it's time we address that. Initially, we pitched a cape with the, uh, the Brimstone release. You guys weren't happy with that. You wanted dedicated, specialized content that made more sense to you. Understandably, I, was, uh, I wasn't in the team then, but I was one of those players with that opinion. So, that's why we're going with Major Arena 2. New best in slot God Cape. We are... We don't have exact stacks yet, but we're looking at pretty much doubling what we've got now, which I believe is plus 10. Yeah, so, I mean, look at the God Cape right now. It's free. Yep. It's best in slot. They look great. They're iconic. But it's been over a decade. Yep. We just did this with the Fire Cape. We brought in the Infernal Cape. Really easy to obtain. You don't even need to finish Major Arena to get the Cape. Exactly. Yeah. You just need to cast some spells, and exactly. there you go. You get it. So we're going to add some, some challenge to this, yep. and we're going to make the Cape better. Yeah, so um, rather than just casting spells in an arena, we're looking at... We would probably rename it, actually, because we're doing this across the whole wilderness. So Major Arena 2 working title, but it's a sequel, essentially. Uh, three bosses found in varying locations in the wilderness. Important to note that they're going to be in a variety of spawns, right? So no clan can camp one to stop you getting your cape. Um, we'll be using a hot, cold device to find your thing, similar to what you do in Fremi Trials, I imagine, something like that. Uh, a lot more challenging to obtain, and importantly, really challenging to reobtain. You have to do it again. You can't just go and pray at, an old, pray at a statue, get another cape. So this is, like, it's going to be super powerful. We're looking at plus 20 rather than a plus 10 you've got now. Uh, equally, it's going to be hard to get. So what you can expect to find is, is so many players running out in the wilderness just in hunt and in, in search and telling yep. their friends, I found one of the bosses, I found one, and then they can kill it, and they can try to find the second and the third one, or maybe they'll hop worlds to try to find it. But as we mentioned, they're randomized and they're always moving. You can't just camp and hold down one boss. Um, it's, it's going to be really revitalizing to the wilderness, actually. For sure. And what I'd especially welcome is some kind of lore suggestions, how we can tie it into the initial. So what makes it a sequel for us is essentially that it's, it's the second version of the cape. Um, we're going to... The three bosses, what we're planning on doing is making you cast the three god spells for each boss, so you'd have to go and change uh, whatever staff and cape you're using. Um, actually, complete the first major arena, essentially. And then, so yeah, if you guys have any suggestions for the lore of how we can work it in, please do let us know. We'll, we'll welcome that. Um, so what we're trying to do, really, is kind of create an ecosystem um, in the wilderness, so people will be in the wildy trying to get to cape. Also, people will be in revenant caves trying to get some stuff. Come on, guys, rev caves, no? Nobody's interested. Okay. All right. There are some people who will absolutely love this. Yeah. That's who we're here for. Um, people have been clamoring for Red Caves ever since we released Old School, right? So it was like, we want God Wars. Okay, cool. Got you, God Wars. Now we want the Red Caves. Um, we're very keen on building on the principles of the original. We want to keep the spirit alive. The tunnels are going to look different. I think what we, we learned from the first one is, you know, just the thrill of a chase. When you're running through that tunnel, especially... People are DDing, logging in on certain spots, hidden away in just the corner, outside of the main cave. Awesome. We want to recreate that again. Yeah, the beauty of, of doing content in the past and then seeing if it fits in old school is, well, we can stick, take a step back and yep. look at it and say, okay, what do we value in this and what do we not like? And we can make it as, as however we like it, really. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, and of course, in, including the, the community and all of that. Um, so, variety of monster levels as with the initial release. So, you've got... Like, so Obviously, think back to what we had. You had like your orcs, quite low level. Then you had your dragons, which were the proper juicy drops. Um, going on to drops, actually, we're looking at a very lucrative release for them. We don't have the drops outlined at the moment because, right, so go back to your initial one with, with raids. Right. 
we're looking at so much armor coming into the game now. It's not, we're not, we're not just gonna like throw on the PvP weapons and PvP armors because it doesn't fit and it looked like 2018 was full of overpowered stuff. We're keen to avoid that. So we're probably going to look at, I think we, um, right, so in our confidence thing, we said we're looking at kind of like pre zolran nerf levels of income. I think we're trying to adhere to that. Yeah, the thing is you're not just running to a safe zone, uh, an instant safe zone where you can just, you know, run out there and farm and kill stuff and bring it back to your, ba back right. to your bank. You're going death. to an extremely dangerous area, which is going to be swarmed with player killers and other people trying to do the same thing you're doing, making money. Um, the question for yourself is really when you get there, do you feel like leaving after you get the first bunch of stuff? You've made 100k, do you leave or do you stay? Yep. And then when the PKers come by and they find a guy who hasn't left in three hours, they're making money. So broadly speaking, what we're gonna do, right, we want, PV, we want PVMers to go and kill some stuff in rev caves. We want PKs to go and kill those guys. We want PKs to go and kill those PKs. A nice little ecosystem based around this cave. Um, talking about kind of potentially like unique rewards, what we'd like to do is give you guys a scroll which will teleport you to the, like, the, pretty much the entrance, like the low level wilderness uh, area of the rev caves. So if, let's say you and your mates are PKing, you guys get absolutely wiped. That's cool, you got your scroll, you go back, you re-gear, and then you've got the potential there for con like constant run-ins, right? That's what plans do. So if we can kind of facilitate that around this area, that'd be awesome. Definitely. Um, we've got some really incredible stuff coming to PVPers, and, and not just PVPers, that's, that's totally PVM. For sure. Well, not totally, but PVPers will enjoy that one as well. Uh, some skilling as well, so it's, it's not on the slide, but we have more to come. There might actually be more to come. I'm gonna test that. Yes, much more too. Um, a few examples would be the, the Chaos Altar in level 38 Wilderness, you might be familiar with. We want to give back a, a buff, so better, I think it's 25% better than a Gilded Altar, but obviously it's in 38 Wildy, you're gonna get dropped. Yeah. There'll be an NPC there as well, who will unnote your bones for you. So you have the potential there to go and grind prayer ridiculously quick, but that risk is gonna be so high because someone logs in and you've got, I don't know, 1K noted bones, see you later. Yeah, essentially what we're looking at is making a, a so a new best in slot, or best, best way to train prayer. Yep. 40 wilderness, or 38, sorry. I think it's 38, yeah. Multi, you can bring noted bones so you're fine. And cash, obviously. To and cash, yeah. Them, yeah. And teams will be just praying to find you. Hot commodity. Yeah. That, I can't wait. Um, yeah, like, we, there's also other people have suggested a wilderness impling. I quite like the idea of that, but obviously it's up to the community to decide. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. We've had some like raids, great PVM, the farming guild, great skilling, and then this is PVP, but it's bringing the PBM element, it's bringing the skill element too. So this wilderness rejuvenation, people have been asking for a long time. Constant Q and A's as well. We've had to kind of avoid the question because we knew we were pitching it at this event. Um, it's gonna be sick. Yeah, guys. So that is essentially the, uh, the Bounty Hunter rework, uh, Mage Arena 2, yep. and Rev Caves. And much more. As it and says. much more, as it says. Cool. Uh, so last up, we have probably what is gonna get the most rapturous applause. Uh, Mod Ed, what would you like to present us with? So, we've talked about skilling, we've talked about PvP, and we've talked about PVM. Now it's time to talk about quests. Yes. <laughs> what he said. So, when you look back at RuneScape over the years, one of the things that truly makes this game iconic are its quests, its stories. And you guys, you've told us loud and clear but you want more quests in old school RuneScape. So we thought we'll give you some more, quite a few more actually. And we've actually already spoken to you about some of the quests we've got lined up. Earlier, we mentioned Making Friends with My Arm, a new quest in the Troll series. We've spoken about new quests coming to Zaya that will be continuations of the story that we started with Klein of Karend earlier this year. And we've spoken to you about a new Fremenic quest. But there is one quest we've been working on that we haven't spoken to you about. A sequel to quite possibly the most iconic quest that RuneScape has ever seen. Sheep Not Sheep Shearer, it's Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer 2. You are you're far too kind. I haven't even told you any of the good stuff yet. I'm also kind of disappointed. We really should be doing Sheep Shearer too. Can we can this and do that instead? <laughs> so, spoiler alert, Elvarg is dead. 
I'm sorry. I know it's, I know it's hard, but you've got to move on. Elvag is dead by your hand, but there are still many questions left behind. What was she doing on Crandor? Why did she attack the island? You will answer these questions, and a hell of a lot more, in Dragon Slayer 2, a brand new Grandmaster quest. And when I say Grandmaster, I really do mean Grandmaster. This quest will have puzzles, it will have combat, it will have exploration, all backed up by an immersive story, delving into the history of the dragon race. But that's not all. An epic quest needs epic rewards. And we've got a few lined up that you might like. Like the Myths Guild. So this is a brand new questing guild. This is another step above Legends. The guild will contain, oh, I just spoiled that. Ignore that, that didn't happen. The guild will contain a range of existing training methods, such as skilling and combat. But it'll also have some brand new, unique content, like that. You totally didn't know that was coming, did you? Like the Wrath Altar. So this will be the only place in the game where you'll be able to craft Wrath Runes. These will be brand new, high-level runes that you'll be able to use to cast Surge spells, some of the most powerful spells in the Elemental Spellbook. As well as that, in the guild, you'll learn how to make superior anti-fire potions. These potions will offer full protection from dragon fire, but for only a short amount of time. The guild isn't the only reward coming from the quest. We've got a few others lined up for you. You could hardly call a quest Dragon Slayer and not have dragons, and we've got three new dragons for you to kill. First up, Adamant and Rune Dragons. These dragons will have a variety of valuable drops, including some new high-level bones, as well as the dragon kite shield and the dragon plate body. <laughs> Finally, we're going to be giving you a brand new solo boss. This zombified dragon, you may have seen some artwork for it earlier, will have, it will have some really nice, unique drops including the Dragonfire Ward. No, the Dragonfire Ward. This will be a ranged version of the Dragonfire Shield and Ava's Assembler, a new best-in-slot range cape. So that's Dragon Slayer 2, or at least a very small sneak peek of it. But if you want to learn more, you don't have long to wait. Because if you head to the old school website right now, you'll be able to read the full Dragon Slayer 2 dev blog. And if you like what you see, you'll be able to vote for Dragon Slayer 2 in an in-game poll later this week. I'm now going to hand you back over to Mod Matt K. Thank you. That's a lot of exciting content. There's a huge amount of excitement in the team, in Jagex, everywhere about the, these ideas. We hope you guys are excited too. Now, the entire team's here today, so please do come talk to us after this. We're happy to talk through any of this with any of you. Um, also, make sure we're back here for five. Dead Man finale happening on this stage. Ten streamers. Hopefully, we'll kill them all. And um, your quiz happening oh, yeah. any minute about that. in uh, uh, the circus stage. <laughs> so please do that. Thank you all for coming. Talk soon. Thanks.